Where the hell have you been all night? Was the first question my wife Ruth angrily asked when I walked through the kitchen door at 412 in the morning. She said it with her hands at her sides and with furious anger in her voice. Needless to say, her eyes were burning holes in me. Come on in. I noticed the red light on the coffee maker was on. Is there any coffee left? She didn't say anything. I grabbed my coffee mug from the shelf on the counter and poured what little was left in the coffee maker into it. Leaning my back against the sharp edge of the plastic countertop, I took a sip. The coffee was still hot, but it was burnt, stale, and left a bitter taste in my mouth. Just right for the occasion. I waited for the next round of questioning to begin. I didn't have to wait long. Stevie. I've been calling you nonstop since 7 p.m. I've left over 20 voicemails. Why is your phone off? You could have at least called. I was terribly worried, thinking you were lying dead in a ditch somewhere. I was impressed. I think Ruth said all that without even catching her breath. Her face was flushed and her voice was angry, but at least she had stopped yelling at me. I could see the pain in her reddened eyes as she stood there in her ragged robe, arms crossed over her chest and shuffling from foot to foot. Well, where have you been? She asked, leaning forward and resting her hands on the back of one of the kitchen chairs. I got some bad news yesterday and I needed some time alone to recover. I spoke in a quiet, calm voice, keeping my eyes on her. Her mood changed drastically. I'm sorry. Why didn't you say that from the beginning? It must have been something really devastating that you didn't want to sleep all night. You should have called me. I would have understood. Ruth's concern sounded almost genuine. I thought about that report I got yesterday afternoon, and yes, she would have understood. Honey, what's the bad news? She asked. Her voice sounded sympathetic like she was trying to get through to me. I stopped for a moment and looked at my wife, the woman I'd been with for the past 28 years, the mother of our three children, the love of my life. I started to answer, but the words stuck in my throat. In my mind, I relived the nightmare of the last 12 hours and tried again. I lost my best friend yesterday. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. She started to speak but stopped suddenly. Steve, for a moment I thought you said you lost your best friend. Honey, David's not dead. I talked to him at least twice last night. He even drove his car out to try to find you. I set my cup of coffee on the counter beside me and turned to my wife. I didn't say it was David, did I? My cold stare told her everything. I watched as the color peeled away from Ruth's face. Then her body seemed to tighten on its own. I know what you did and who you did it with. I just want to know why. The private investigator's report was detailed, too detailed for my peace of mind. I'd suspected for a while, but the cold reality revealed to me still felt like a blow under the breath. Ruth and David, who would have thought it? Certainly not me. Steve, it was a stupid mistake that happened once. We'll get over it. You know I only love you, she pleaded tearfully. Even now she was still lying to me, but it didn't matter anymore. After looking at the pictures and listening to the audio recordings, there could be no reconciliation. Thank goodness our children were grown and on their own. About 20 minutes later, while packing the few things I would need for the next couple days, I heard a muffled phone conversation. Ruth's words, Steve, I'm so sorry, were too quiet and belated. I'll come back and get the rest of my stuff when I decide where I'm going to live for now, I said without even looking at her. This time there was no I love you or kiss goodbye as I walked out the front door of our marital home, probably for the last time. I felt devastated and incredibly sad. How can you lose your best friend in the world and move on with your life after that? I guess I'm going to have to learn.